There are two types of nettle here in the UK. We have Urtica dioica and Urtica urines. Both almost identical to look at. It's thought that Urtica urines has slightly narrower shaped leaves and dioica has larger, broader leaves. Other than that, there's really not much difference. Getting on to picking. Now, the nettle does deliver a bit of a sting. You get some of that formic acid and that's delivered through these super fine little hairs that are up and down the stem. When it comes to handling, to use the expression to grasp the nettle, there is a technique without gloves on. I get away with this more times than I don't. And that is to go really low, low down. And as I close my hand, I'm pulling upwards, okay? And so thus I'm pulling these hairs flat and in line with the main body or the main stem. And that's pretty much my top tip for, for harvesting these. Okay, and the next thing I'd do is go ahead and whip this off with a knife so that it can come back another year. But I've got it nice and low down. And if you look at the height of these things, I mean, compared to me, it's almost as tall as I am. There's a lot of good material there to be harvesting. Okay, so now that I've got my nettle, my specimen that I'm gonna show you today, I then need to pretty much continue to push those hairs flat all the way up. I'm just gonna keep my hands pinned together and go all the way up the stem. I end up left with these bits, have not been stung, and I've got the stem, which is what I'm interested in today for making cordage. Right, we're gonna take this back to camp. I'm gonna show you how to break this down, and then we're gonna talk about the next stage on. Okay, so guys, here we are back at the main camp. I've got the fire going, because I'm gonna be sat down paying a bit of attention to what I'm doing here because this does require a little bit of concentration. On the forest floor behind me, a pile of, of nettles from uh, a couple of days ago, and that's quite important to today's lesson because they do require a bit of process or processing. So I'm gonna sit down now, take you through this, and then we're gonna jump onto the next phase, which I did a couple of days ago, and then we'll, we'll take you right the way through to making cordage, some of its uses, and unforeseen benefits. If you're new to the channel and you've just joined us today, I'm Nick Goldsmith from Hidden Valley Bushcraft, and today I'm showing you how to make natural cordage using nettles. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe and like button. That'd be absolutely fan dabby dozy. Let's get on with it. As you can see, just like almost everything, the stick is not going to be straight where it is growing towards the light. That's not really a problem here. What we're looking to do is remove these fibers on the outside, okay? It's these fibers which make the cordage, okay? And they come off readily, but running through the center is a pith and that's what gives it real rigidity. And you can see that there. So what you need to do is basically get inside this. So let's just take this off. Now, to get inside here, you'll notice that there's intersections at every couple of 10 centimeters, I'd say, up the stem. You'll see another one of these bracts or intersections. And usually this is where you get growth and this is where you get leaves and things. So you wanna try and pick these off if you can. Okay, this can be quite a, uh, a relaxing process. Depends on the mindset you approach this with. Because you are gonna require many, many, many nettles to make a decent length of cordage, this thing takes time. And we probably would have done this as a group, sat by a campfire in a camp. If you've got the thumbnail for it, you want to break into right down the middle of the stem. If you haven't, take your knife and very, very gently, you can do this a number of ways, you could do a sort of scissor in action. You just want to, notice my, my finger is below, so I'm not going to push through and get myself. Just break open the stem. If you've got a small whittling knife, that's ideal. If you've got a larger kind of a mainstream knife like this, sized knife, then you want to uh, just use the tip and be very delicate. This is personally why I think a clipper or a clipped point is slightly better sometimes than a, a spear a spear point design. There we go, right. So get to that first bract and I'm just gonna pop that open. Oh, he says, pop that open. I'm gonna split that again and you can hear it splitting. You want to try and preserve the fibres on the outside and not damage the stinging nettle. I've seen people in, uh, in some, some circles tending to crush the stem flat. They use, they use their knife and they roll the handle over, bash and um, batter and crush the fibres. I'm sure that does have some, some use, but for, for, for ease of use, you know, on to a bit of a winner now, look. Hopefully I can just slip the knife in there and 
っておいであっと next point oh push too hard nearly went through they're thinner at the top than they are at the bottom this will become apparent and important later on as we start to look into splicing uh, and adding other pieces to the cordage that we're going to make so I'm just going to take that off there so the next piece of the puzzle sees me removing the pith now to do that all I've got to do really is bend this over uh, my, my uh, middle finger and then use my index finger to just gently pull away okay and it should leave you with these nice green strands typically a nettle comes with about four green strands and they tend to work in sort of if I separate them from this bracket you can have them in pairs like that and make slightly thicker cordage or you can break them down into individual strands and make something much finer something that would probably be better or akin to a fishing line all I'm doing now is just gently encouraging this to come away here and pulling downwards okay and the fibers are coming with it this woody pith keep hold of it keep it around your camp because when it goes dry it's great for starting a fire Find a technique that works for you, start to peel these off, try and keep them as whole as possible. Don't worry too much if one or two of them run out. What I mean by running out is they, they run off a side and then come off in your hand. Don't worry, you're going to need to process many, many nettles to make any length of decent cordage. Even to make a metre, you're probably looking at genuinely about 30, 40 nettles. So okay, so it ran out towards the end. I've got the thicker ends down here and the thinner ends at the top. The pith itself that's just come off, I'm gonna leave on the forest floor here next to the campfire and then the next time I need to, to get something going, I can use those in a cinch. If I show you these now. Okay, they're very soft, they're very moist, and whilst you could make cordage this way, what will happen is as these shrink and dry, your cordage will start to unravel and it'll have gaps all over the place and it'll be very difficult to keep tight and true. So what we generally tend to do now is we take our cordage and we hang it up in the camp somewhere for a couple of days. Now just as I lay this one in, look to the right and here's some I prepared earlier. So I made these just the other day, another good place to dry them is above the quad pod where you've gently got the fire on. So let's take a look and you can see these have really shrunk down. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these now to show you how to make the next stage, which is cordage. So I'm just straightening out these nettles now because they've dried in a bent position. And I'm gonna just lay them out so that I can start to look at and hand pick what I need. This is quite a fun exercise really. So getting together and doing this with other people would have probably been the way that we did it. As an individual, it's nothing to stop you from doing it. I personally use exercises like this as a bit of a recalibration method to give my, my brain a chance to switch off. Have a go at this at home. Let me know how you got on. Leave us a comment in the box below. And what I'm particularly interested in is that constant noise that we all have in our minds. You might just find it goes quiet. I don't want to impose my thoughts on this too heavily. I'd like to hear it from you, so let me know what you think about that okay so i've picked up a piece of nettle i want to be able to show you guys the fine process of this so i think what we'll try and do is make something thicker than we normally would and that might be easier for you to pick out what's happening with the strands inside the cordage so a great top tip with this is although you've dried it out for a couple of days and although it's still green and still moves, it's always a really good idea to just pull it through a little bowl of water first. So you're not soaking it, but you're just slightly rehydrating it. Okay, and that's just gonna breathe that little bit of life into it and help it to twist that bit easier. So to get this started, you can either try and keep these whole or break them down. Now looking at it, I think actually breaking it down is gonna be the best bet. So I've got two strands, thicker at one end thinner at the other so put one down to start with and just start with one strand take finger and thumb on both hands and just twist away okay so this finger is going this way and that finger is going that way you can see i'm creating a twist of sorts so all i'm doing is just twisting it up so thumbs 
on the right hand side is going over the top. Now when I go to put these together, these two points and drawing my fingers, you should find that the cordage wants to turn around on itself as it's trying to do so. And I'll know when I've twisted this enough, when that happens very freely, there we go, that's what I was looking for. That's how I get this process started. So I'm just gonna keep twisting and keep twisting and keep twisting until this bends round on itself. And I'm gonna pinch this point at the bottom. And all I'm gonna do is encourage it to continue twisting the way that it wanted to, just go with it. Now to begin with, this is what used to have me fooled. My brain was saying, but I've twisted the other way. Surely it would want to, to go the other way. Not the case. Just go with what Mother Nature is trying to do. And you should have, okay, your first piece of cordage, which will look something like this. Very basic, very small, very humble. And the rest pinched here to keep the tension and then the two strands thereafter. If I go back to person of view, it might be possible to show you a method which rather than do it incrementally with finger and thumb, I'd be able to roll. If you've got a decent set of trousers, you can roll these on here. Okay, so that's my first bit there. So what I now want to do is pretty much roll both of these fibers here, take them and roll them. The other method is to pinch here and pinch there and to continue to twist by hand, slowly and meticulously, with my right thumb going over the top, then using the other hand to pinch at a time, holding that there, and then do exactly the same on the next piece. Roll, pinch, roll, pinch, roll, pinch, roll, pinch. Okay, then put these two together, let go, and encourage that twist once more. And you can see, you start to get some quite fine cordage. It's quite straight, it's actually got a little bit of uh, tensile strength to it, and it's actually really quite strong. So already I've made, you know, I've made sort of 10 centimeters of cordage, and didn't take that long from a single nettle. Now the problem comes where I'm going to start to run out of nettle. Take note that this side is so much thicker than this one, and this one is soon to be running out. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is encourage that to happen a bit earlier. I'm going to cut that off. So now I have two bits. Okay, and this one is slightly shorter than this one. And I'm going to splice in another piece. So go down to that first one that we spoke about, that we put down. It, break it down and what you're looking to do is try and match the size of the piece that you're, you're you're splicing in and all you're going to do is lay it over the top don't worry about the tail sticking out and you're just literally going to go thumb over same thing again and splice this in okay and this is splicing you've got to do it nice and tight if you want to just get a little bit of fingers wet just wet that cordage down slightly if it's not quite doing what you want it to. Okay, be meticulous. And I think that's the, the attention to detail thing that comes with this process that's so important. So there we go. And then we're gonna twist this one over. And then we're going to put these two together. Just keep this one going round and round and round. It's really important that that new one fully bites in. And we'll put those on top of each other and encourage the whole thing to twist and hopefully it won't be too much fatter. Now I can see that that's not entirely gone to plan because you can see how wide these strands are. Now don't worry about this little tail, okay, because you will cut that off at the end. Your cordage will be covered in these little splice points where you've spliced something else in. Then we're going to go back down here, pinch that. Now, the method you could do with rolling them on your thigh, as it comes to a point where I have to splice in another, that gets so thick and woody towards the end, I'm going to take that off. Okay, I'm going to go over to here, find another one of my strands, or on the floor, wet it down. Use all your available 
assets, including your teeth if you have to. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take this off here. Wind that up. And splice that in as well. Let's get rid of this tail. So all I'm going to do to splice is lay one over the top of the other one. Okay, and begin that twisting again. And it'll get incorporated into itself then. Really keep this nice and tight and always twist the same way. Okay, and then put those two bits together and encourage them to bite into one another again. Cool. So I've got that little tail sticking out from when I did that splice earlier. And what I'd like to do is cut that off really. So you want to make sure that this is super tight guys. Now a great technique to maintain tension, have a spare temp peg with you at all times. And what I found to be helpful is I begin to tie the cordage I'm making around the temp peg. Okay, and this helps me to, to maintain tension. At the end I'll go back, unravel it all and start to tidy up all of these little tails where I've maybe done some splicing. Or you can do it as you go. Cool, so we're going to go ahead, make a little bit more, and then I'm going to show you one I made earlier. And talk about some of its uses. So once you've finished making your cordage and you've got it all tied up around your, well I'm using a little spitting wedge and I've even written on there nettle. It goes back to being a kind of uh, a dull woody colour, it loses that green edge to it. You quite quickly have yourself some readily deployable cordage. As I said, from a survival point of view, this is a great skill to know how to make readily available cordage. Some of the other uses for nettle cordage over the years, it's been incorporated into nets, you know, nets for fishing. Um, nettle itself has been used as, a, as, a, as a one of the finer cordages with a decent tensile strength, has certainly been used by our prehistoric ancestors by using a simple thorn or a, or, or a prehistoric trawling hook bound with some, you know, maybe the root of a cedar tree or something as natural cordage. And this has been used as the main line for that. I think nettle cordage is, is, whilst it can be a little bit more tricky to make and a bit more of a process than buying off the shelf synthetic cordage, it's far nicer to our landscape, to the woodlands, to the area in which we're choosing to camp to leave behind that, as opposed to, as I said, nasty synthetic fibers that will be there for hundreds of years to come. Mm -hmm.